good morning in the last class we we discussed uh, the concept of uh, stability of slopes and then we also discussed uh, the causes of failures the various causes uh, of failures uh, are discussed in detail the causes of failures are of gravitational force erosion of soil due to water and air seepage force sudden drawdown condition means a uh, lowering of water table earthquake force and during construction activities uh, uh, because of improper uh, excavation or improper uh, the embankment uh, construction failure may take place having the knowledge of, knowledge of uh, various uh, uh, causes of slope failure now let us understand what are the types of uh, slopes slopes are of two types namely number 1 na uh, infinite slope and finite slopes for understanding purpose uh, we can classify slopes into two groups namely uh, infinite slopes and uh, finite slopes uh, in the beginning itself we understood what is slope an exposed surface makes an angle theta uh, beta surcharge angle with respect to horizontal is known as slope slopes are of two types namely infinite uh, finite uh, infinite and finite slopes if the exposed ground surface which making a certain angle is extended to semi infinite length it is called infinite slope in case of infinite slopes uh it it it, it fails uh, um, by the movement of soil from a point of higher elevation to the point of lower elevation so example for that uh, the finite slope is like this so this is a uh, firm strata failure pattern will be like this so this is weight component failure surface can see here the soil mass move in the downward direction parallel to the surface you can see here the surface of the soil and uh, the firm strata soil it is almost parallel uh, generally that failure take place because of a gravitational force under a dry condition or uh, under uh, the saturated condition as this failure of uh, infinite slope does not cause much effect uh, this uh, analysis or study of this infinite slope is of not, uh, not that important but it is uh, uh, from understanding point of view it's uh, it, it is considered next the another type of uh, 
slope is uh, finite slope. Finite slopes are the man-made slopes generally. As the name itself indicates, this type of slopes having uh, the, the base and top level surface. Uh, finite slopes having a base and top level surface and uh, this uh, height of the slope is to a limited extent. Uh, all man-made slopes are called as uh, the finite slopes. As slopes are uh, constructed by disturbing the natural strata in the case of uh, uh, excavation, again uh, the embankment is constructed by procuring soil from the other side. Generally, uh, the failure of this uh, uh, finite slope is, uh, chances of failure is more. Hence, more important is given for uh, uh, this uh, finite slope. Almost all analysis we carry out on finite slopes. So example for this finite slope is uh, a canal embankment, a road embankment, railway embankment or a dam embankment. Uh, if it is in embankment or in filling. Suppose if the same um, structures are in uh, uh, excavation, it may be a canal or it may be a road, a tunnel, something like that. So there, uh, uh, as uh, these are all man-made structures, it will give more importance for the analysis of uh, the finite slopes. So finite analysis of finite slope is of greater importance for civil engineers. Next, <coughs> types of uh, slow failure failure may take place in uh, the if the structure is uh, or uh, 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 if the activity is in uh, excavation or in filling so these failures uh, the the type of failure it is uh, can be uh, conveniently categorized into three types namely uh, phase failure Toe failure and base failure. In order to understand these uh, phase failure, toe failure, and base failure, let us construct uh, consider uh, an embankment. or it may be a, a cutting having a both bottom base base and a, the top the failure pa patterns may occur like this The first failure is called as uh, phase failure. And this can also be called as uh, slope failure. The second one is called as uh, toe failure. And the third failure surface is known as uh, base failure. These are the general types of uh, failure take place in case of uh, both uh, 
uh, embankment as well as in uh, uh, cutting, cutting or excavation. Phase failure take place when the soil at the face of the embankment or excavation is weaker and if soil is uh, stronger at the uh, uh, that, that, the toe portion. When failure surface intersect the face of the slope is known as face failure. This occurs when soil above the toe is uh, weaker. The second type of failure is uh, toe failure. When failure surface passes through the toe, failure surface passes through the toe, it is called as a toe failure. This type of failure occurs in the case of uh, steep slopes. When the slope provided is inadequate, uh, under such circumstances, this type of uh, toe failure take place. Here, uh, the soil is homogeneous above and below the toe. The third type of failure is a base failure. So, when failure surface uh, passes below the toe, it is called as base failure and this, this uh, uh, position is called as a toe. Soil surface, uh, the failure surface passes below the toe is called as toe failure and this failure is predominant when uh, soil uh, below the toe or the toe, at the toe portion or below toe portion is a weaker, considerably weaker. So, these are all the types of uh, failure generally we come across in practice both in uh, uh, embankment as well as uh, in uh, cutting or in excavation. As uh, infinite slopes we discussed infinite slope, the failure of infinite slope does not cut, uh, cause much damage and hence uh, uh, we generally not considering that analysis to a maximum extent. But the analysis of uh, finite slope is of more importance for civil engineers. Now, let us consider the analysis of uh, the finite slopes. Analysis of slope stability analysis. by Swedish uh, circle method. Analysis of uh, finite slopes can be easily carried out by Swedish uh, circle method proposed by Swedish engineers. Here they proposed the failure surface is uh, uh, considered as a circular arc and the failure is uh, a rotational failure and the failure of slope take place because of rotation of uh, soil mass in the downward and the forward direction and the failure surface is considered as uh, uh, a circular arc. Uh, here, in the case of finite slope, we consider uh, two types of soils, namely uh, stability of uh, stability analysis of slope for uh, the pi is equal to zero soil, and stability analysis uh, of soil uh, having both cohesion and angle of interfection. Uh, let us consider the the first case, stability. analysis of cohesive soil with 
by Swedish uh, circle method. That is uh, pi is equal to 0. Uh, here one more thing to be understood is we cannot construct the slope or we cannot have the slope with the, the purely uh, frictional soil because uh, particles will not stick with each other even if you provide a very very flat slope. Uh, sand cannot stand uh, on its own. Hence, uh, generally we do not study this uh, uh, stability analysis of uh, frictional soil. We study and we use only the cohesive frictional soil or purely cohesive soil for uh, uh, the for slopes where it may be a embankment or it may be a, a cutting. <clears throat> In order to understand this method, let us consider uh, a slope a finite slope having a uh, the base and top surface level surface. Let uh, h be the height of the slope let us uh, designate uh, the face of the slope as say a b and let us uh, assume a a trial slip circle. So, this method consisting of assuming number of trial slip circle and finding uh, the factor of safety of each uh, circle. The factor of safety corresponding to the slip circle which gives a minimum value will be considered as a critical slip circle. Here we have to assume number of trial uh, slip circles and we have to work out the factor of safety. The circle which gives minimum factor of safety will be the uh, critical slip circle. For that, uh, that we have considered uh, one slope, let AB be the, the face of the slope. Let us assume a trial slip circle which originate from the toe and meet the, the top uh, surface. Let us designate this as a point B. Let this trial slip circle having the radius or and O be the, the center of rotation or axis of rotation of this uh, the radius and let uh, W be the weight of the soil wedge A B sorry A B D A B D A be the, the failure wedge. Let W be the, the weight of this failure wedge and this 
uh, W acts at a distance x from the uh, axis of rotation vertically, the line extended from the axis of rotation to the line of action of W. W is the weight of the, the failure wedge and uh, x is the, the distance of the line of action of uh, W to the uh, vertical extended from the axis of rotation. Let delta be the included angle for this uh, radius of the circle. Here, whenever failure take place, uh, it is common concept that the soil first it moves in the downward direction. When there is a, a position for the moving in the downward direction, it moves in the forward direction. That we discussed already in uh, uh, the lateral earth pressure also. Because of this weight of the soil wedge, there is a tendency of moving soil in the downward direction then in the forward direction to attain the natural condition or uh, equilibrium condition. As this W is the actuating element which is responsible for the to tend the, uh, the soil bed to move in the downward direction. Hence, it is creating a, what is called as uh, the driving, it acts as a driving agent. So, this W weight of the soil bed is the, the driving force which try to drive this entire soil wedge in the downward direction and in the forward direction. So, this driving force will take place along with this axis of rotation. So, knowing this uh, the perpendicular distance of this driving force to the axis of rotation extended vertically, we can determine the, the driving moment. Driving moment due to this uh, wedge of soil wedge is equal to W into X. So, driving moment uh, called as M D is equal to W into X. Next. <coughs> We have considered the uh, trial slip circle. Let uh, Cu is the, the unit cohesion acting along the slip circle. And let uh, L arc we can designate like this L arc is the length of the arc AD. Cu is the unit cohesion, it means there is a resistance for this driving force and driving moment, and that resistance is uh, due to this uh, uh, cohesion, cohesion of the soil, uh, that is because this is the, the cohesive soil pi is equal to 0 soil. This Cu along with L gives us the resisting force. Resisting force or shearing resistance developed along slip surface is equal to Cu into L arc. Again this Cu L, L arc is equal to resisting force or shearing resistance and this is force. This resisting force will also create the moment. 
so this is acting along the arc a a d we have for easy understanding we have considered away from the arc the c u and l arc so knowing the force and knowing the the perpendicular distance it is r we can calculate a resisting moment so resisting moment m r is equal to c u into l r into r c u l r is the resisting force multiplied by the the radial radiating that means it's a perpendicular distance that gives us the resisting moment here l r can be calculated by using the relation 2 pi r delta divided by 360 degree where r is equal to radius of the uh, the slip circle assumed slip circle and delta is the included angle which uh, makes uh, at the axis of rotation knowing the uh, moment moments response for for driving and moment responsible for resisting we can easily calculate factor of safety factor of safety here against sliding is equal to resisting moment divided by driving moment therefore factor of safety is equal to resisting moment divided by driving moment that is f is equal to we have resisting moment that is uh, mr that divided by md that is, is equal to mr is uh, cu into lr multiplied by r that divided by w into x so this is the expression we get uh, for factor of safety for one trial clip circle like this uh, uh, we can assume number of uh, we have to assume number of trial clip circle to work out the uh, factor of safety the trial slip circle which gives uh, the minimum factor of safety will be considered as critical slip circle it is very simple uh, first you have to write this figure uh, legible figure then a simple statement let us consider a, a slope of height h let ab be the face of slope then next let us consider a trial slip circle ad a b d a will be the the failure wedge for this uh, assumed slip circle let w be the weight of the the failure wedge which acts at the centroid of this area a b d at a distance x from the axis of vertically axis of the rotation here w is considered as a driving force driving force along with this uh, the perpendicular distance gives us the driving moment so driving moment md is equal to w into x driving means it will drive the soil wedge in the downward and uh, forward direction to fail hence it is called as driving moment next for this driving for this sliding there is always a position along the slip surface and that a position is uh, uh, due to this uh, unit cohesion unit cohesion it, it's acting all along the uh, trial slip circle unit cohesion along with the uh, the length of the arc 
will gives us uh, the shearing resistance or uh, resisting force against this for uh, the driving knowing uh, the resisting force and uh, the radial distance we can easily obtain uh, resisting moment therefore resisting moment is mr is equal to cu into l it is cu lr is the resisting force multiplied by uh, perpendicular distance that gives us the resisting moment so here lr is equal to 2 pi r delta divided by 360 degree next factor of safety again is sliding is equal to resisting moment divided by driving moment so we obtained expression for resisting moment cu lr into r that divided by w into x this is the expression for uh, the factor of safety uh, this is uh, applicable for purely a cohesive soil if it is mentioned for a purely cohesive soil we can uh, we have to explain this uh, method along with the figure here uh, the proportionate uh, neat figure is required for easy understanding and for easy explanation also the previous one is uh, uh, for cohesive soil or pi is equal to zero soil now okay, let us consider the second case stability analysis of slopes or slope for uh, c pi soil or this 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 can also be called as uh, stability analysis of uh, slope by method of slices Uh, this can also be uh, uh, mentioned or called like this Swedish circle method of uh, slope stability uh, for C pi soil or Swedish circle method of slope stability analysis for uh, uh, by means of method of slices. So like the, in, in any way it is uh, it can be understood. Now let us consider uh, a slope a finite slope having uh, the base and uh, the top level surface let it be uh, a and b the face of the slope as a and b and in this method also a number of trial slip circles are to be assumed and factor of safety to be uh, find out the circle which gives minimum factor of safety will be the the critical a slope or critical a slip uh, a surface uh, let us uh, draw the the failure surface
this failure uh, this slip circle uh, the uh, uh, trial slip circle having a radius of r at the axis of rotation let uh, the subtended angle is delta in the previous case uh, for cohesive soil we consider the entire uh, the failure wedge it is a b d here also we consider the entire failure wedge after assuming a, a trial slip circle the failure wedge here the failure wedge uh, the into base is is to be split into number of slices and each slice Having a of unit thickness and uh, the width is b. So, for easy understanding and for easy computation of a factor of safety, we can consider uh, uh, a minimum number of slices. First, you have to divide the entire uh, soil wedge into number of slices, say one. So, I have divided this uh, soil wedge into number of vertical slices uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, say 6. Having unit thickness and uh, the width of each slice is equal to B. Then each uh, weight of each slice is uh, assumed to be acting at its uh, centroid. We can calculate weight of the wedge knowing the area and unit thickness we can calculate volume. Volume multiplied by unit weight of soil gives us the weight of the slice. So, this is uh, acting and uh, convert the weight to suitable scale and mark it proportionately. So, this is W1. Similarly, for the second slice W2 W3 W4 W5 and W6 uh, entire soil bed is to be divided into number of uh, convenient number of slices and the weight of uh, each slice to be calculated and uh, the weight is acting assumed to be act uh, through its uh, centroid or cent uh, centroid or center of gravity. And uh, after calculating weight uh, the same to be marked along the slip circle uh, to a convenient scale like this. If we resolve this uh, weight component into their uh, normal and tangential components 
and uh, the normal component will uh, leads to the resisting uh, force and uh, the tangential component uh, will leads to driving force so if we resolve this uh, uh, the weights into normal and uh, tangential component and it can be resolved like this uh, draw a radial line from the axis of rotation to intersect the the weight component which is marked on the slip surface like this for all the slices for w4 w5 and for w6 so <clears throat> knowing the the angle made by the w1 w1 with respect to the radial line we can resolve this w1 into the horizontal uh, the normal and tangential component say for example if you consider uh, radial line and weight say w1 consider this as alpha angle subtended by w1 with respect to radial line is alpha and if you resolve this into normal and tangential component normal component is say this is uh, say n1 and the tangential component will be will acts like this so normal component is equal to w1 cos alpha and tangential component is w1 sin alpha so based on the weight of the slice we obtain uh, the normal component and tangential component see here normal component will uh, will exert a force against the the failure you see here at the along the slip circle it will drive into the surface soil Uh, again uh, this no tangential component will try to move away from the slope normal component will act towards the slope and uh, tangential component will act away from the slopes hence this normal force is considered as uh, the resisting force and uh, tangential component is considered as the driving force so this is one way analytically we can resolve like this we can also resolve and mark the uh, w w that is weight of the slices graphically it is very simple uh, just to draw a perpendicular to this uh, this uh, radial line to meet the arrow head of uh, w and uh, you mark this as say this is n1 and this is t1 directly we can resolve graphical method and this is uh, analytical approach both are okay so n1 and t1 we got n1 is uh, the resisting force and t1 is the the driving force the same way we can uh, mark uh, normal and tangential components for all the slices n2 t2 n3 t3 
टी फोर एन फोर टी फाइव एन फाइव एंड टी सिक्स एन सिक्स so weight of all the slices are resolved into their normal and tangential component conveniently we can uh, resolve this by analytically like using by measuring the the angle here between the weight and uh, the the normal line or graphically also we can uh, measure here anyway we are uh, we have marked this weights to a scale then so measure this uh, t1 this length and n1 and converted uh, multiplied with the scale that gives you the the normal component and uh, the tangential components so after uh, resolving the uh, weight of each slice into their normal and tangential components we can obtain uh, the normal force uh, this uh, resisting force and driving force here all the tangential components will uh, contribute towards the driving force tangential components will contribute to driving force therefore driving moment caused by all the tangential components of slices is equal to driving moment comma md that is equal to sum of all the uh, tangential components of slices that is sigma times of uh, t in some cases if the failure take place the failure is a base failure if it extend the failure surface extends well below the 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 base of the uh, toe toe base under such circumstance when we draw when we calculate uh, the weight of the slice and when we draw the radial line to intersect the weight so this radial line will pass to the left of the uh, weight component so under that case tangential components will act in the reverse direction so the, that is the, this is the case say for example sometimes so this is say for example w6 we, we consider uh, if the the failure is uh, the base failure the radial line originated from the axis of rotation will cross the uh, w and uh, make the face like this so this is the radial line drawn from the the axis of rotation and if you draw tangent shell components to this uh, it is t6 and normal component is n6 so though it is uh, the radial line passes to the left of the uh, the w that also will contribute to the resisting force whereas this tangential component acting in the reverse direction Uh, is contributing to the resisting force under such circumstance we should consider this t6 as negative so all other uh, uh, t6 are some of the slices if uh, two more slices one more slice uh, there again it is radial line crossing to left the, that is also considered as negative <coughs> next if uh, cu is the unit cohesion acting along the slip surface and delta l is the length of individual uh, slices next therefore 
resisting force sorry this is driving force and uh, it's not driving a moment it's a driving force driving force is equal to sigma into t then resisting force acting along the slip surface is equal to unit cohesion into l arc plus tan pi times of n here cu into l arc is the resisting force developing at along the slip surface in the opposite direction tan pi it is the frictional angle pi is frictional angle n is the normal component sum of the normal components that is, is equal to cu into del sigma times of uh, delta l plus tan pi times of sigma types of n so this is the resisting force next therefore resisting moment mr is equal to cu into this can be replaced by l arc cu into l arc plus tan of uh, tan pi times of sigma n into r so this uh, resisting force acts along the slip surface ad so resisting force cu into del, uh, sigma times of delta plus tan pi of sigma n is the resisting force resisting moment is equal to this force multiplied by the radial distance is perpendicular distance in the same way we can calculate a driving moment so driving moment md that is equal to sigma t multiplied by r then lastly factor of safety f is equal to so we know mr uh, divided by resisting moment moment mr divided by md that is is equal to cu l r plus tan pi times of sigma n multiplied by r that divided by sigma t times of r therefore factor of safety f is equal to cu l arc plus tan pi into sigma times of n that divided by sigma t so this is the expression for factor of safety uh, in this method so method is very simple uh, first you have to consider uh, a tri slip uh, circle for a particular slope ad then ab d a is the the failure wedge we have to divide this failure wedge into uh, convenient number of slices of unit thickness and uh, the width b the weight of each uh, this uh, slices is assumed to be concentrating at the center of uh, centroid and these weights to be marked on the along the slip uh, surface then if you resolve these weights component into their normal and tangential components this can be run like this it can be resolved analytically by measuring the subtract and angle here this is alpha say called as alpha 1 so tang normal components equal to w1 into cos alpha and tangential components equal to w1 into sin alpha we can also resolve w into uh, their normal and tangential components graphically that's also very easy it's very simple after drawing the radial line to intersect the w1 uh, marked along the slip uh, surface uh, 
for the particular uh, slice then uh, knowing the weight this weight we have we have marked already to a scale draw a perpendicular line from this radial line to meet the arrow head of weight and this will be marked as tangential components and uh, this is marked as normal component measure this n1 length of this uh, n1 and length of t1 that gives you that multiplied by this selected scale gives us the normal component and tangent component likewise we can mark for all the slices uh, here you can see here all tangential components here acting in the downward direction t1 t2 t3 t4 like this and they are contributing to the driving force sum of all the tangential components is equal to sigma t that's that's is equal to driving force this driving force multiplied by the r it is uh, the r is the perpendicular distance with respect to axis of rotation for each t1 t2 t all those that gives you the moment so driving moment is equal to sigma t into r sum of the tangential components multiplied by the radial distance r in the case of uh, uh, the base failure base failure suppose in the case of base failure the failure surface extend uh, well below the, the the base under such circumstance if you draw radial line to intersect the weight component marked on the slice the radial line will pass to the left of the weight component and if you resolve the weight into tangential and uh, normal components tangential component act in the reverse direction in the upward direction that indicates uh, it will uh, that particular slice or slices will contribute to the the resisting force under such circumstance a t should be considered as negative so like that we can obtain t sigma t then uh, multiplied by r gives us the uh, driving moment here i have not marked this uh, unit cohesion and length of the arc cu is the unit cohesion acting along the uh, slip surface in the upward direction to oppose the the driving force cu along with the length the arc will contribute to the uh, resisting force since soil is uh, uh, having a uh, the angle of internal friction that will also contribute to the the resisting force plus tan times of pi multiplied by the sum of normal components as all normal components will contribute to the resisting force so sum of algebraic sum of all this uh, normal components gives us the sigma n so so this is the driving force c u into this this can be written as l r plus tan pi of sigma n so driving force multiplied by this radial distance means a perpendicular distance gives us the uh, sorry, sorry resisting force multiplied by the uh, radial distance uses the resisting moment then factor of safety is equal to resisting moment divided by driving moment so resisting moment is cu into l r plus tan pi of sigma n divided by sigma t r r r get cancelled we get uh, f is equal to cu l r plus tan pi times of sigma n divided by sigma t so this is the standard expression uh, uh, to find out factor of safety in the case of uh, c pi soil or a method of slices this is for one circle likewise if you assume number of trial slip circles and work out the factor of safety the circle which gives a minimum factor of safety will be the the critical slip circle uh, for that particular slope